Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, we have someone who is going to help us make it rain, get more leads. To quote Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, it's all about the leads. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Our guest today is Brian Driscoll. And Brian, give everybody your your, your quick bio of you. Yeah, sure. So I'm I'm a digital marketer. I've been in this business for like 15 years, but I'm also a real estate investor. So I do a lot of buy and hold. I buy places fix them up, and then uh, rent them out. So I hold those. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of success generating leads for real estate investors. They're looking to connect with people that have distressed properties. So so you basically scratched your own itch, essentially. You were a, you're a real estate investor. You needed leads. And you got so good at it, you created a company that helps others get motivated leads. Is that correct? Exactly. Yep. Okay, great. So let's just rewind the tape. And what were you doing before you got into real estate? Yeah, so I've been, I got into digital marketing like 15 years ago. I was on, a, I don't know if you guys know Warrior Forum. I originally was like poking around on that forum, <clears throat> just learning, bought a $49 course on how to do WordPress and all that kind of stuff. Then one of my buddies, uh, he was selling blades on eBay. I'm like, hey, dude, let's just stick a WordPress site up and see what happens. Put that up. He started selling and started crushing. I'm like, wait a minute, I can do this for other people. So like 10 years forward, I'm doing this for multi, like national and international companies, big e-commerce, things like that. And dealing with a little bit of like the corporate kind of world, like it, it's different, you know? And then uh, I'm also trying to buy real estate. So I stuck up a little website in Pittsburgh, just like a carrot site and started doing the market and I'm crushing it. And I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's offer this to other investors. I like dealing with investors anyways. They're cool people like down to earth. So yeah, we just came back, back around and started doing local marketing. Interesting, interesting. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I know the I know the Warrior Forum forums. Uh, it's def- definitely a great place to start. I I'd like to know more about kind of what what you're doing with kind of the the websites to generate the traffic. Um, you know, you, you talked about the motivated uh, sellers. Let's or motivated leads. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, so what, what I'm doing originally we're targeting. So we have for people that don't know too, you have normal people that want to sell their house on the MLS. Then you have motivated sellers. We call them motivated sellers. They're people that have like hoarder houses, distressed properties, they inherited homes. So that's what we target. We target the people that can't list on the market. They want to sell quick and uh, can, and they want looking for a convenient sale. And then um, in exchange, they're going to give you a, a lower price on it just for the convenience. But what we found works is uh, Facebook ads, Google pay per click and SEO. So there's three different types of marketing there. Um, and we, we mainly optimize and, and push people's website out. We push their brand out and it, it's very direct, direct messaging to get the right audience. And that, that's mainly what we do though, is uh, those three different types of marketing. Interesting. So how, do you, how do you find, how do I find like the home, the distressed homeowners with, with Facebook ads, you know, am I marketing to everybody and just hoping that the numbers work or how do I find those people? Okay. Yeah. So here's how it works on Facebook. Facebook actually just changed and it's going to change more. I don't know if you guys have heard like the Apple update, they're going to start pulling cookies and like not letting you uh, track as much data, but also in the real estate sector uh, about six to eight months ago, they started pulling back. So we can't even target people based on age, sex, uh, we even zip code. So what you have to do on Facebook it's really important on the messaging and the ads you're doing because we do have to go broader. We have to show to a 15 mile radius minimum around a city. We have to show from everyone from age 18 to 65 plus, we have to show to male and female. So we can't limit that to older people that would have equity, things like that. So the way we do it is the messages uh, extremely direct. So it's like we buy houses or we're look, we're cash home buyers, or if you want to sell your house fast. And then once people click that, I don't know if you guys know, there's two different ways to do Facebook ads. There's one is uh, Facebook lead forms. And then the other is people click it and go to a website. We choose to send them to a website because we want to pre-qualify them out also and show them, okay, number one, we're investors. Read what's on our website. If you're still interested, then you can fill out a form. 
If not, that kind of pre-qualifies them out, unless you're a realtor and want those types of leads also. Um, so that's kind of the process there. And then we, we just found you have to be super direct. And then also what we're doing is we're um, like Facebook has a Facebook pixel, the code you put on the website, which allows us to track data. So if someone comes to the website and does not fill out a form, it allows us to show ads back in front of those people. So same as if you're looking at shoes on Amazon and then you don't buy them and then they're following you around. So we kind of build a funnel there too, based on people that uh, have shown intent and didn't convert. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. So, so Brian, let's do some math. Sure. Who, who doesn't love math? Love it. Okay. So I'm a new investor and I'm looking to do exactly what you do. I want motivated leads. How do I know how much I should pay for a lead to know what my ROI is on this paid advertising? That's a good question. So in every city in every different area, the cost per lead is going to be different. Like I know in Pittsburgh, I'm getting leads depending on the time of year, like 50 to 80 bucks. And that's a qualified lead. They filled out like 15 questions. I get guys in California, they're like 150 to $200 a lead, but the houses are more expensive. And it also depends on uh, what your strategy is. Are you flipping? Are you wholesaling? If you're wholesaling, how much are you getting five grand a deal or 20 grand a deal? Uh, but on the lead cost, there's really no way to, like I can ballpark people. I can't predict what your cost per lead is until we see how the market uh, engages with a campaign when we put it up for you. But I do know roughly 50 to 80 bucks across the nation is where we're at. So even 80 bucks. And uh, I, we have about a 9% close rate. So say one out of 11, that's what, $880 per deal is what we're, caught, what we're spending. You know, But, it, but it's going to be different for everybody because it depends on your close rate too. Depends on how fast you answer the phone. Like it's a game of speed. All, a lot mm -hmm. of different variables there. Interesting. So so you, you said that, okay, it's, it's, let's say it's $80 ballpark to get a lead. A lead right. is not a conversion and a lead is not a purchase. Correct. And, and then it's, uh, basically one out of, uh, like an 11, a 9% close rate. So you said that your cost to close a deal, $881. Yeah, like 880, something like that. Okay, 880. And, you know, that's a lot of people, and, and I'm just coming this from the land investing side, right? It's different from the house side, because right. if I were to go and to deploy, you know, fifty dollars for a lead, I mean, my mailing cost and my 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 close rate for a mailed property is about um, eighty dollars uh, all in. And so now, if I go and I just do that eighty dollars for a lead, for example, and I'm now spending eight hundred dollars to get a a piece of land, you know, unless it's a, an expensive piece of land, you know, the, the numbers don't really work. And I think that that's one of the things that we should talk about is the math behind it. And I think that's where you're going to Mark, right? No, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Brian, do you want to talk a little bit more on that and, and, and expand on that? Yeah, sure. So say for example, land, stuff like that, uh, the, the $80 we're getting is on a home. So, so say for example, like I'll buy, one of the deals we're just doing, I get a hundred thousand dollar property. I put like 40 K into it, praise at two fifteen. So I got a lot of wiggle room. $800 turns into a lot of money. Uh, but on, on your case, if you're only dealing with uh, land to say $5,000, something like that, like a lot lower cost, you'd have to look and we'd have to run the numbers. Po most likely what I do is do a test in the area. Say, okay, let's stick a test up. Let's see what we can get leads for. Let's see if it even makes sense on Facebook. Sometimes it might make sense on Google pay per click, although Google tends to be a little bit higher. And we would test the market and see what happened and if it, and if it makes sense economically for you. You know what I mean? And then no, also there's yeah. another thing. You can do Facebook lead forms, which are real cheap if you like grinding because it will get you a lot of lower quality leads, but you might get leads for like five bucks. Okay. So if you've got a good filtering system, let's say you have an inexpensive virtual assistant, that might make more sense to pay right. five bucks for a lead. And then you got to know your conversion rate. So if you've got a 10%, 9% conversion rate, then the math could be more compelling. Right. Yeah. You'd be lucky to get nine, 10% on the Facebook lead form. So, but, but if the cost is cheap enough, I don't know, we'd have to test. We'd yeah, have to that's, test. That's basically what it comes down to. And, that, and, and really what this is, is all a test. You have to test a lot of things when you start doing paid traffic, right? So how do you go about it? How do you think about systematically, these are the variables I'm going to test 
and then isolate, okay, this one works, and then go to the next variable. How do you think about that? Yeah, you know what? It's actually funny. We do a lot of that. So I have, uh, we do everything for our clients. And a lot of guys, a lot of agencies will test, they test all, do all their tests on the client's money. We have a, we have a big brand that we just do testing on nationally. We just throw up different ads all the time, different headlines, stuff like that. We push it out to the whole nation and we're looking at, okay, which ad converts, which headline converts, which ad text converts, what gets us cheaper cost per lead. And then once we find a winner ad, then we give it to our clients. Like we just push it over. Okay, here's another concept that we can push out for clients. And we're constantly every week testing new stuff. But yeah, you got to look at um, images. You got to look at your messaging. You have to look at your ad text, uh, the engagement, all that kind of stuff. And, and then mainly it comes down to what's the cost per lead on that specific image with the headline combo. And then, and the targeting as well, correct? Yeah, targeting. But with the real estate, it's, it's kind of tougher because we have to go broad. So it, it, it's super important on the creative. You know, because okay, so, if we can't target as, as uh, like if I was selling shoes, I could target uh, 70 or 45 year old females that like uh, Oprah Winfrey or whatever. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Scott Tyler, your thoughts? No, I, I mean, I think that I think that it really comes back down to the numbers. You've got to know your numbers and you've got to really be able to kind of get in there and understand where, where you're going with that. And I think it all comes back down to systems too, right? You know, you can go target whoever you want, but the whole thing is how do you find the individual land inv the individual landowners uh, on Facebook? It's, it's, it's like a scavenger hunt almost. So it sounds kind of it fun. Is. Sounds kind of cool, but better know those numbers. Otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of money. Yeah. And you know what? A little on that too. Facebook's algorithm is extremely smart. So once, Say, say we have a website, we're looking to buy land. We buy land. We put, we're cash, cash buyers, we buy land. We send people to this website. We target broad and we put the Facebook pixel on the website and we have an event that will trigger when someone hits the thank you page. Once we get enough people to go through that website and say, hey, I want to sell my land, Facebook's algorithm is smart enough to, just because they don't tell us the demographics and all the data on people anymore, they're still using it. And what they do is they will take that data and show your ad to very similar people that converted if you have the tracking set up properly. So their algorithm will start showing ads to specific people once they learn the type of people that are trying to sell land or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Let's talk about, you know, if I go to you, and I won't let Scott Todd because we're competing, and I go to you and say, hey, look, um, Scott's going to go all organic. I'm going to do paid traffic. I'm going to hire you do these ads for me or give me these best converting ads, what's going to make me a good client or what's going to make me a bad client? Like, how am I going to make this a great investment for myself? And what, what things should I look out for to be like, what, you know, either I have unrealistic expectations, maybe I don't have the ad budget, maybe I don't have the processes in place to convert. What types of things make you want to pull your hair out when you have a client? Yeah, sure. So you hit a couple of them right there. So number one thing we're looking at with clients, we're looking to work with seasoned uh, investors, guys that number one can handle leads, but also if they can, uh, they, like it's a game of speed with all this stuff. Like if someone hits you up and wants to sell, sell land or sell, even sell property, whatever, first person that usually gets back to them with a the reasonable offer gets it. So a lot of guys, I was working with one guy, he said, um, he said, yeah, the leads are no good. And he's like, I call every back, everyone back every Friday. I'm like, what do you mean you call them every Friday? He's like, I got two hours blocked on Friday and I call all my leads for the week. I'm like, dude, you can, you have to call them within like two minutes of when they submit the form. So different things like that. Uh, second budget, you have to have enough budget to, um, to put out, put out enough ads and get enough people going through your website for Facebook to learn even who you're trying to get in front of stuff like that. What, when you say enough budget, give me a range. Normally we recommend like 50 bucks a day, 1500 bucks a month per platform. So if you're doing Facebook ads, it'd be 1500 bucks. Okay. And then once you dial in on, here's our cost per lead. Like once we figure out what the winners are, then you can choose to scale. But if you're only, if you're doing less than that, it takes too long. And then clients are like, we're not getting enough leads and it, it just becomes a problem. You know, so I'd say budget 50, uh, 50 bucks a day. And our good clients, they're just running. They have good systems on the back end. They have a good CRM. They have a, uh, a lot of these, a lot of people that I've seen are most successful will have the lead comes in, it goes into a CRM, automatically sends a text message that will book an appointment for them. They don't even need to call them. It'll send an email. And then if the people don't book an appointment, it will automatically follow up with them, uh, follow up with the lead also. 
so that um, they don't have to manually do it because because people forget, like even me, I'm, I'm going to forget to call people. But if I have a system in place that, hey, this person didn't book an appointment seven days later, we're texting them and shooting them an email. Then three months later, they're getting a deal from someone that came in today. And they didn't and, and because of the follow up process. You know, so th- those are those things make good clients and make good relationships. Scott Todd, you're 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 nodding your head. I mean, I think it all comes back down to systems, right? You know, the the you build the systems and let the systems do some of the work for you. And systems are are not like built overnight; they're built over time. Right. And ultimately, I think that when you have those systems in place and you you it's able to kind of relieve to to serve as a relief valve. You let the systems work, but then you let the people work on the stuff that's really core to the business. Hundred percent. So, Brian, let's let's shift a little bit into SEO or search engine optimization. Sure. When I say SEO, what does that mean to you, and what is your strategy to okay. optimize it? Okay. So, with SEO, mm-hmm. what that is, that's ranking in a free section of Google. Someone types in uh, "sell my house fast." We want to rank in it in the top so we can get the results and in the in the, in, uh, the space of like selling real estate like motivated sellers and even selling land it's a very low search uh niche it's not like like say there's a difference even with intent if someone types in sell my house versus sell my house fast it's two different audiences and two different intentions on what they're looking for sell my house just normal is looking for like a mls agent or whatever stuff like that so on the SEO side, what we're doing is we're trying to optimize a website, meaning we're trying to make sure all the content's unique, it's relevant, and when someone lands on the page, that's actually answering their question or what they were looking for when they were searching Google. So we do uh, we optimize the website, and then also you want to do off-page link building, which helps build the website's authority as well. But SEO has a very high return. It's just it's super slow, very slow process. It's, it's a long-term investment. It is. You know what? SEO is kind of like owning a house versus paid like renting, you know, because once you pull your ad spend back, your, your traffic completely disappears. SEO, you're building a solid foundation. Once you're ranking, you're not paying to be there anymore. Interesting. Interesting. And so just to expand on the, the, when you say optimizing the website, you're not doing like what we call keyword stuffing. You're actually providing useful, relevant information and Google likes that. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. Back in the day, we used to be able to just stick keywords on a page and you'd rank. The same with Facebook, their algorithm, and they're, they're so smart now. What you're trying to do is you're trying to make relevant content that, like the search engine's primary purpose is when someone searches, they want the number one page, the most relevant page that's going to answer that person's question or what they're looking for to be number one. So what we're trying to do is make really awesome content that's going to answer and give that person what they're looking for. And then if, if we do a good job at it, we get rewarded and we get the rank. If you're keyword stuffing and giving garbage content, like people come to your site, it just doesn't make sense for them. It gives no value. So you're going to want to stay away from like all that kind of stuff. Okay. Scott Todd. You know, it's, it's funny because um, on Landmoto, I, I look at what people write for like headlines, for example. And, you know, the, the headline, when, when someone's looking at an ad, for example, they're looking at the picture and the headline. And it's amazing how many times people try to stuff keywords into a headline or into somewhere. And one, it sound when you read it, it doesn't sound natural. Okay. Like it doesn't sound uh, like something that you would read. And it's amazing how many people think, well, I'm just going to stuff all this stuff into here as opposed to just adding value for a human they're trying to write this thing for a computer and the computer saying, eh, it's all about the human. So, it, you know, it's, it's refreshing to hear what you're saying is that look, just, just deliver the best content you can deliver and it will rise. There's no, you have to be smooth, fancy, or elegant in it. Just write content that people need or want in their lives and you'll be there. Yeah. hundred percent. So Brian, what should we have asked you that we didn't ask you regarding Getting motivated leads. So motivated leads, the, the, well, what should you ask that I didn't? That's a good question. Um, I would say like a lot of the mistakes I see people make, and that, that would be a good one. Um, 
like the mistakes I see people, if you guys want to do this on your own, number one, if you want to do Facebook ads, for example, make sure you have a Facebook pixel on your website. Oh, I see a lot of people come to me and they're like, Hey, I spent a lot of money on Facebook. Nothing's converting. Uh, and I look at their website. You don't even have a pixel. Number two, make sure you have it, the tracking on your website. Also, that's at, what the tracking is. It's a code that you put after whatever action you want people to take. So if you want them to fill out a form, you would put this code on the thank you page. That allows Facebook to know, okay, that person just completed a step. Let's track like what they're like and see if we can get more of those. Um, also, a lot of people spend a lot of money boosting posts. I don't see a lot of uh, benefit in that. And uh, one really important thing is with, say, Google and Facebook on the paid side, whatever you tell them to get you is what they're going to get. So a lot of guys will run ads for awareness or um, link clicks or likes on their page or engagement. If you tell Facebook, hey, I want people to click, I want link clicks, they're going to get a whole bunch of people to click your ad, and that's it. Or if you say, hey, I want to get engagement, you're going to get a lot of engagement on your post, but that's it. Or like we usually target conversions. We want people to convert, which means we'll get way lower clicks, but Facebook's algorithm is going to put our ads in front of people that are likely to convert versus like the vanity stuff like page likes. You know, right. So, so that's, uh, that's one thing I see a lot of people spending money on. I'm like, that's cool. I mean, if it makes you feel good, uh, but they're going to, they, they know Facebook knows who will like a post and do nothing else or who will watch a video and they'll put your ad specifically in front of those people. So, so go, go after what you want. You don't have to beat around the bush. Like if you're looking for leads or conversions, optimize for that. You don't have to do video views and hope people will click through. Fantastic. Fantastic. Scott Todd. I think it's good, Mark. Well, Brian, this, your mentorship has been invaluable, but now we're at that point in the podcast, we're going to put you on the spot one more time. We're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? What I have for you here, I have lived by this and it's made me a lot of money and avoided a lot of situations. Uh, it's a book, The Richest Man in Babylon. And there's one page in that book, The Five Laws of Gold. I recommend everybody read that and implement it. It, it saves you from gambling, wasting your money, getting involved with wrong people. It's, it's literally five. It's one page of the whole book. It made me so much money and avoided so many gambles and like bad situations. All right. Give, give us the five. Okay. Off the top of my head. Okay. It's uh, save 10% of your money. Okay. Don't... Uh, Try to get unrealistic gains. Okay. Don't get involved with hucksters. If you're partnering up with anybody, um, make sure they have experience or you have experience uh, with that. And then the fifth one, oh, that's a good question. You put me on the spot here. I know. Um, I know. I may have to get back to you on that. But mainly what it's saying is uh, save your money, invest it, uh, invest it in normal things too, not like um, get rich quick stuff. And, uh, don't be gambling with your money. If you're partnering up with anybody, make sure that, like, if you're getting into real estate, if you got a lot of money, you're like, I want to get into real estate. Make sure if you're partnering up with someone, they have the experience to back it up so you can fund it. But, but you're not getting involved with just two guys coming together and be like, hey, let's do real estate. And then you just lose your money because you're buying bad deals or, or whatever, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, this is great. This is great. Um, before we get to Scott Todd's tip of the week, I've got to talk about my sponsor which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done this thousands of times. He will take you up that mountain quickly, safely, and efficiently. And by the way, we guarantee that the tuition investment you make in Flight School, you are going to make back 180 days or less. So it ain't going to cost you nothing. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a free consultation call. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I know you are all on the NFT bandwagon. I am, I am. All right, check out this website. It is the NFT of the day. For those of you that don't know what NFT is, it's uh, non-fungal tokens. Non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible yeah. tokens, sorry. You can buy unique things with it. It's yours. It's digital. Like if you want to, I don't know, if I want to sell this particular image of me right here, 
then I could possibly sell it and you could own it. I don't know how much money I could get for it, but you can sell images, digital images too. Check this website out, Mark. It's, it'll give you a daily dose of stuff that you can invest in or buy. This is very cool. I'm, I'm more interested in selling NFTs than buying them, but very cool. This might, this might give you some inspiration. It'll definitely give me some inspiration. Just see what the market is. I'm still in the research phase of it. I'm still not completely sold on it as something that has um, legs, right? Like it, it, this could be sort of a, a flash in the pan type thing. And people look back on this like, I can't believe I, I did this, right? I can't believe I bought the first tweet ever for two point whatever million dollars. Right, right. Or it, this might be the future where like buying art, there's only one original piece of art that's signed by the artist. So, you know, if, if we could buy a fractional share, and then I, th I think Mark Cuban did a thing on Clubhouse talking about how fractional ownership uh, will most likely be regulated out. Um, and so the future of that is, is sort of tenuous as well when, when we start talking about regulation and, and all this stuff. Anyways, I digress, but that's a cool little uh, site. But look, you know what, Scott? That's going to cost you money. You know what my site's going to do? You know what my tip of the week's going to do? It's going to make you money. And more importantly, it's going to get you leads. It's about the leads, the motivated leads. So my tip of the week is learn more about Brian and what he's doing over at motivated-leads.com. We will have a link to the site. And clearly, after listening to Brian, he knows what he's talking about. So um, check it out. Brian Driscoll, are we good? We're good, man. Yeah, this is a good time. Awesome. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I'm going to thank the listeners and remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Brian Driscoll from motivated-leads.com is if you do us three things. You got to follow us. You got to um, then uh, rate and review the podcast. Follow, rate, review. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the wholetailing course, how to double your money. 30 days or less for free. So please do that. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right, Brian's like, oh, I didn't know they were going like that. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.